Champion Chase, El Fabiolo, how far? Far. Um, John Bond has no chance against him. I just, I just, I'm, I'm shocked. If I had to pick one horse that's a, a very, very short price for Cheltenham, it would be John Bond. He's three to one generally for the Champion Chase. First of all, you've got Nicky's form, the, the form of the yard. Like, I couldn't be back in any horse. If it was in a maiden hurdle in Newbury, I wouldn't back it at three to one, never mind the Champion Chase. What we said at the start of the season and after the first couple of runs where he wins the slower chase, etc., um, is that John Bond's jumper will have to be better than El Fabiolo's to beat him. His engine isn't as good. And John Bond's jumping has got worse and his jump on the last day was terrible. He made a shocking mistake at the top of the hill. That was his fifth mistake in the race. Now, different jockey and perhaps Nico was the man for him. Um, but I can't... I, I think if you get to lay... If, if there's a market on the day without... El Fabiolo, I think John Bond is something like evens at the moment without, I'd be laying that all day to, without El Fabiolo and the without market on Betfair. Oh, I think he'll blow out. He could, he could. It comes down to his jumping, uh, previously good, bad the last day, so I'd be against him. El Fabiolo's jumping is fine, he does clout the odd one, but generally it's only in the first half of the race. Mm. Uh, when they quicken up, he seems to get better. Now what I'll say is there's going to be a lot of pace in this race. Edward Stone will have to make the running after what he showed the last day, which was brilliant. You have got other front runners there. Elixir, Denuts, and Editor, Geet will be up there, etc., etc., etc. I think that something like a Captain Guinness, who's going to be hunted around the back, could stay on to be third and do it that way if they go too quick. But a really fast run race will suit El Fabiolo, I think. I think Paul will sit four or five lengths off them to the outside. And he's just. I think the, f- the faster they go, the more he'll win. Yeah. If, if they go slow, he'll win three lengths. If they go in mental gallop, um, I think he could win 10, yeah. We were talking beforehand, if Constitution Hill had made it to Cheltenham, I would have still said El Fabiolo was the one banker I was most confident about. Okay. Very hard to beat. Like, he needs to fall. To me, uh, if you asked a bookmaker, give me a price in El Fabiolo to get around, he'd give you 10s on. So he's twos on there with Skybet to win the race. I think if he gets around and jumps adequately, he should win, yeah. Yeah. Um, Edward Stone has a chance of being second but then again if there's three or four of them jumping every fence together that's very hard to do he needs to get a solo and I don't think he will I don't think he will definitely not with the pace no. scenario you mentioned with no. the Lixier Nuts and Co in the field and Gentleman yeah. Demi is going to go hard in front as well because he's only got the one yes absolutely going. yeah yeah, he will so that's going to make things very very awkward for him yeah. I was told the other day that Nick, every horse Nicky Henderson is running is being extensively tested before they go and how many runs are you having this week did you see earlier one on Friday he has a couple on Saturday. He's taken his horse of Thursday out already. Really? Uh, that's, you can't, you can't, like, let him win a couple of races before you start backing. Well, listen, horses. there's there's lads, everyone's entitled to their opinion. There's lads on Twitter trying to make out, there's no, it's like Leslie Nielsen in that meme. Uh, nothing to see here, as the explosions <laughs> go off the background. Everybody, back to your homes, nothing to see. This is a grade one stable yeah. that's had nine horses pull up in 10 days. That's not nothing, and it can't only be the ground. Yeah, no, 100% agree. You can't back Nicky's horses for the moment until you see him win a few races, yeah. I think that's fair. But lads will tell you Jericho to is a great bet for the Supreme. Cue him winning by five lengths now. I think that's a race to watch, by the way, that champion chase. I'm just looking forward to an explosive yeah. show from El yeah, Fabiola. Yeah, yeah, live yeah. on TalkSport 2. If you, can't get to, if you can't get to see it, we'll be covering it for you live and exclusive. Well, I say exclusive, not really exclusive, because no, really, our no. sister station talk sports doing it as well. But um, yeah, we're, we're doing it live with uh, Lizzie Kelly, Ripper Bell. Live and not exclusive. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, full coverage of Cheltenham all four days. Um, looking forward, I'm just looking forward to, a, to an explosive show from him. Uh, Banbridge, I mean, he if he gets his ground in the Ryanair, he wins, I think. He's a massive chance on decent ground, and he could get it. Cheltenham dries up quite quick. Uh, we still, what are we now? We're still uh, nine days to the Ryanair. Um, he could get it. What is he there? He's three to one there with Carls and, and Ladbrokes. Yeah, he wouldn't SP. His SP will be dictated by the ground. Um, Envoy Allen, brilliant in it last year. Loomed up, travelled, amazing. Um, he's 10 now, so that's a slight negative. Stage star will be up in the van. Winging fences for Harry. He's brilliant to watch. I love watching Harry over a fence. Uh, Capadano, if they went a mental gallop and he jumped okay, his jumping is just all right. Um, if they went to mental gallop, Capadano could stay on and stay on, but he'd want the ground soft and turn into a staying race, which you mightn't get. A conflated, I'm not convinced. He was running a good race in this race a couple of years ago, but he's getting on a bit. He had a couple of falls. Um, obviously, he's stepping down a triple suit him, but I just, I could see him being placed but not win. So I'll definitely be waiting. I haven't backed Banbridge yet. There's not a chance in the world I could back him yet, but uh, 
if it was good ground and you're getting the right weather forecast and you're getting the right price here on three to one, sure, why wouldn't you back him? I'm going to steal somebody else's content and pass it off as my own. Well, I can't do that now because I've just admitted to stealing it. Lizzie Kelly made a really strong case in the TalkSport Cheltenham preview the other day in London for Protectorat. And as she started oh. talking, yeah, that's what I did initially. And then the more she talked, the more I went, hang on a second. He's been rebuilt in that handicap chase off top weight behind Broadway Boy. Then he's gone very close against Lompress, giving him weight in the Fleur de Lis chase at Lingfield. Mm. And then the last day he's pushed Shishkin when Nicky's horses were running well. And Shishkin is the second highest rated horse in training behind Gallop on Deschamps over fences. Um, over a trip that might not have been ideal for him. Back down in distance, 16 to 1 each way. I can see the case. He travelled really powerfully in the Gold Cup last year. Yeah, he hasn't won since November 22. Um, I just don't like the horse. So, I don't either. I don't uh, either, to be honest. Yeah. But th this isn't a great race. If no, Bambridge not. is gone, no, it definitely isn't a great race. I'm reasonably sick that Alaho's still not about, but there you go. Oh, we'll get over stop. that eventually. Stop the lights. Fildor, briefly. Yeah, he'd have a squeak. Uh, good run in Ace, good run in Cork, etc. Stepping up and trip. Um, El Fabiolo and Dino Blue are going to be red hot favourites for their they races. Are. Yeah. They're the only two to beat him. Ho hopefully they'll win. Um, he'd have a squeak. You just don't think he's enough class to do it. Like, uh, Banbridge's run, um, he didn't run in the turns last year because of soft ground. He was good in entry. And then his reappearance to beat Pictori was a very, very good performance. Yeah. His jumping was fine. People were picking up Banbridge's jumping. He did just gently rub three or four of them, but he was good at the last when Pictori wasn't. Um, he should improve. He's a very likable horse. He's won the Martin Pipe. He seems to like Cheltenham, so... He's a lot of things going for him, except for the elephant in the room being the ground. And of course, Pictori confirmed the form yep. by winning next time out in a race where everything in behind, all two, weren't off a yard. Do you reckon? They certainly handed him uh, an easy lead, we'll call it. Jesus Christ, a forerunner grade one, and the two big guns go, ah, no, on you go, Harry, you take it from the front. Gold Cup, Gallop on Deschamps. 99-year history of the race. There's only been eight multiple winners. I absolutely love this horse, but I could not back him at his price. Um, brilliant horse. Best staying chaser since Cato Star in the last 14 years. The only worry I'd have against him is the um, the fact that he's had three hard races. Now, I know when you win by 23 lengths, you probably don't think it's a hard race, but those massive performances are as, probably as tough as an easy win. Uh, the ground has been quite bad all winter, so I don't think there's been too many easy races for horses. I see he's out to 2.6 in Betfair, and I'm just very surprised at that. So... What he, do you think that means? I don't know. I just... I see he was like evens on 4 to 5 a couple of weeks ago, which means all the other favourites in Cheltenham that are evens are 2.1 on Betfair. You know, or if they're 4 to 5, they're 2.1. If you look at uh, Dino Blue, or you look at Sergino, you look at all those, I just... Uh, I find it strange... Uh, why he's 2.6. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, it's the Gold Cup, it's three miles two, it's a crazy distance. Um, and they're all standing the ground fast or slow. Two, the, the score is obviously 2-2. Two, two. Uh, the one thing I'd say about fast or slow is that he's undoubtedly the best jumper for me in the race. His jumping is just magic. It has to save him a lot of energy. The race IQ data backs that up as well. Does it? Yeah. Jesus, he's amazing. A Shishkin... Jerry Colon would want it soft. Long press disappointing the last day. Gentleman's game, there's no word about that. He'd want very, very soft ground, but he'd have a squeak. He's quite unexposed. I think I got him badly wrong. I was kind of dismissing him mm. earlier. He was third to Classical Dream at Punchestown over hurdles. He's beaten Ia Maximus over fences. I'm sure Ia Maximus has improved massively from that mm -hmm. run. Uh, he's come back at Goran Park behind Easy Game, who's the winning most yep. horse in William Mullins' yard on ground that probably didn't suit him. And then... While most people will tell you, oh, Brave Man's Game made a bad mistake at the last in Warwick. No, he didn't. He made a mistake, but he lost very little momentum. Yeah, and the further Brave they Man's went... Brave Man's Game was giving him six pounds. But anyway... like Yeah, and the ground was pretty horrible, but... Yeah. Third start over fences, it's... Uh, huge. Huge performance, yeah. So, heat of a squeak. Uh, I've been on a couple of preview nights uh, with, with Shark. Uh, and actually, he's a fella. The more I get to meet... The, Lovely fella. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if I'd... Be my cup of tea, but I actually like him a lot. He's, oh, he's, a he's very entertaining. He's uh, he's a nice guy, um, and I hope Huey runs a massive race for him. Um, sat second in the race last year. If he'd stood up, I think he'd have been second. 
I don't know. They, were, they had just gone past him, but then again, he does often hit a flat spot, as Shark says, and he stays on again. They had just gone by him coming to two out, but things didn't go perfect for him in the Gold Cup last year. A high senior led uh, Hewick then when he fell, took it up six out. He kicked on down the hill. He's kicked on around the bend. I think they'll be slightly more patient with him. I could see him run on to be placed. And like, Corrick Rambler is a spring horse. He's won the ultimate twice. Last year he beat Fast or Slow. Fast or Slow, I think, was giving him four pounds off the top of my head. Uh, there's very little between them. If he's ridden like a non-trier out the back and stays on, he could certainly get place money, yeah. Who's your Gold Cup bet? Oh, maybe fast or slow each way, but again, a very, very small... Uh, a small bet each way in fast or slow, but I love galloping the champ. I love oh, it. so do I. And if they came to the last together... It wouldn't bother me if Gallop and Deschamps won if I'd back fast or slow, to be honest with you. That's my attitude to it as well. And I know that sounds like a really... I mean, of course, who who really wins if Gallop and Deschamps wins? Racing wins. <laughs> Everybody wins. Everybody but wins. You, look, you don't have to bet on every single well, race. I'll give you an example, right? So just to say, last year, Gallop and Deschamps was my nap of the meeting. He was the biggest bet I had. And I put him in the most multiples, et cetera, et cetera. This year, I've put him in no multiple. And I just... Do you know what I mean? The three runs... There's something, isn't there? I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on I it. I can't tell you either. So last year he was my biggest bet. And this year with three brilliant performances, I haven't backed him yet. Now maybe I will. I don't know. But just at the minute I haven't anyway. If you're a regular listener to the show, you'll know that Lizzie Kelly and I are massive fans of this horse and we were putting him up at the start of the season. I was putting him up for the Turners. Mm. Jesus Christ. But, you know, back in the day when he was 14 to 1, 16 to 1, 10 to 1 for that race, that's that, I've loved this horse for a long time. I'd say I he would have won if he stood him. up in the Turners. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mare's chase very, very briefly because I want to get your thoughts on the handicaps. You're in a great position here. Uh, yeah, sure. And so are subscribers to Gavin Lynch Racing. Um, it was actually the second. The first tip I put up this season was Alaho at 7-1 for the, the Ryanair and the second one was um, uh, Dino Blue for the Mare's chase. I think she's got a massive chance. I think her form is at a different level. Uh, people will crib her performance and then going back to the Mayor's Novice Hurdle when she went off 5-4 to four after winning Clonmel. But back then she was very, very keen and all that. She, You know, she wasn't mature. Last year she fell. She didn't fall. She finished. But she nearly fell at the second last in the Grand Annual again at the last. This year her jumping has been brilliant. Now don't forget as well, last year after Cheltenham she came back and won two handicap chases in Ferry House and Punchton which takes a huge amount of doing. Yep. She beats Phil Dorr. Uh, she beats Gentleman to me at Christmas. She runs second to um, El Fabiolo the DRF, like that's just top of the bus form for me. Uh, Allegory Devassi, much better the last day. Uh, dropped down a trip to two miles in Nace. It was interesting what Willie said afterwards that um, her, they changed work rider to basically to Paul Town and that the horse wasn't fit when she got hammered in Fairy House. Um, her first five jumps in Nace were terrible from Allegory Devassi. She nearly jumped out through the wing at the second. Um, her jumping needs to improve a lot. Limerick Lace, Gorgeous horse. Second, I backed her in the Troy Town each way. Finished second. Uh, she's been impressive since. She'll definitely stay the trip. Uh, and Brides Hill is a very nice mare. Haven't won well the last day. But I just think Dino Blue, uh, the Leopard Sound the last day was 2 1. People say that she mightn't stay. But if you go back and look at her novice hurdle a couple of years ago in Ferrius over two and a half, um, she stayed very, very strongly through the line that day over two and a half. So I've no issue with the uh, with the trip. I think she's the best jumper. She travels the best. Allegory Devassi might jump slightly to her right. And I think, I think she's one for multiples, yeah. When I interviewed you in November, you said you need to be able to approach every single horse and every race with a fresh perspective and don't go in, don't go into the new season with any preconceived notions. And whatever you do, don't go into Cheltenham with preconceived notions unless you're absolutely adamant that you've worked something out about a horse and you're prepared to back that opinion. And there are horses that I used to do that with and it's completely changed my perspective. It's amazing really? how you can meet somebody and one simple line okay. can change how you're betting and change how you're analyzing races. So I want to thank so you for that. You're not as staunch on something. Or no, I'm not. Now, I'm I'm sticking to my guns in Atlantique, and if he goes and proves me wrong, well, then I'll uh, yeah, apologize no, you, to everybody. You know, it's, it's like Dice Artinos I don't think is good enough or whatever, do you know? Yeah. You have to have opinions, but... But the reason I'm saying this is if we were having this discussion at the start of the season and I hadn't spoken to you I would be adamant Dino Blue wouldn't stay and I'd be convincing myself of that and I'd be talking myself back into back in Allegory Devassi okay. I um, still can't really understand how she could I know Impervious is a really good horse but she looms up alongside Impervious over the last and it's almost as if she just stopped the one thing I'll say 
uh, is that Impervious reminded me so much of Hurricane Fly. Small horse. And to me, horses are very intelligent animals. And Hurricane Fly knew he was in a horse race. Yeah. And he knew where the line was. And he knew when the jockey was pushing and Hurricane Fly would stick its head out of Leopard Sound and would win by a half a length and all that stuff. That horse wanted to win. Impervious struck me a bit like that. Wanted to win. Did well to beat Dino Blue and Cork. Did well to beat the Henry Horse in Punchstown. Did well to win again in the Mayor's Chase. Uh, Impervious wanted to win more so maybe than Allegory de Bassi. So I wouldn't crib her too much. I think it's a really good run last year in the Mayor's Chase. But I think Dino Blue is a really classy mare. Jumps fantastic. Travels very well. I think uh, just go and have a look. Just click on the finish. If you go into racing TV, just click on the finish of her um, behind Brandy Love two years ago in the two and a half mile novice hurdle. Just watch it. It'll only take you 40 seconds to watch her. But uh, to me, she finished strongly through the line that day. So I think I think the trip would be fine. And I think uh, by all accounts, her stamina and her family should be fine too. Well, in that case, she might very well just be the the pick to, to shoot the lights up. We're recording the Gold Cup preview on Monday. So by then I'll have been doing nothing I'd love to go see Dune 2. I don't have time to go see Dune 2. What's Dune 2? Exactly. What is Dune 2? It's only the biggest film around at the moment. Never heard of it. Don't, you don't need to worry about it until after Cheltenham. What is, don't say it's uh, sci-fi, is yeah. there? Denis Villeneuve's big sci-fi epic that everybody's talking about. No, I can't do it. So it's made up stuff. It's not genuine. It's not real. It's <laughs> No, it's not based on a true story. No. no. Right. And far, well, far away. Uh, uh, what do you call that program that was out there a few years ago uh, with the, the, the frozen world and all that stuff? What was it? Biggest program in the world. Game of Thrones. Yeah. So, uh, Anne-Marie, we always try and watch the same uh, kind of programs together on Netflix, etc. And we're watching uh, Game of Thrones. And we're, I'm just about hanging on now, five, six episodes into it. And I'm going, no, 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 no. So I'm saying nothing. I'm sitting on the couch. And the next thing, you know the blondie one, the main actress? Amelia Clark. Okay, so her. So Daenerys. So, okay, so somebody says to her, what are we going to do? And then, I'm paraphrasing, and she goes, I know what we'll do. And she opens a bag and out flies three dragons or something. Yeah. So I stood up. That's it. <laughs> I'm done. That's me. Out. <laughs> so thankfully, we've got a television in another room. And I went over and started watching football or <laughs> cricket or something. I just went, three dragons out of a bag. No. Nope. Gone. Can't handle it. I can't remember that scene, by the way, and how it played oh, out that way. Oh, wow. What a load of rubbish. By the way, you're wrong. Game of Thrones was phenomenal up until the final season and the finale is horrible. But no, no, House no, of the no. Dragon, back, no, no, season two, no, 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 the no. prequel, it's all redeemed. No. Uh, point is, it's all Cheltenham, 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 Cheltenham. Right. And I might very well be back on the Allegory de Vassy train by Monday. But right now, Dino Blue, can you... Uh, give us some thoughts on handicaps very, yeah, very briefly. No problem. Can I throw one at you before I, I ask you anything about any of the other races? Because yeah. there's a horse I'm fascinated by, and I'd okay. be very, very interested to get your thoughts. Shout. Built by Ballymore. <laughs> this horse was with Pat Doyle. Yeah. Uh, there was a big rumor he was going to be quite good. He okay. uh, didn't quite work out early on for Martin Brazel, mm -hmm. who's had the second in the Carl Cup for the last two years, mm. including Fast or Slow. Mm. And I can't help but notice that he's closing from 33s to 20s to 16s and now 14s for the Carl Cup. And he's been a wide margin winner of his last two races. Uh, I've been on a couple of Cheltenham preview nights and somebody asked me, what do I like in the Carl Cup? And I said, said built by Ballymore. So um, now what you'll notice is a couple of things. One is that his last two uh, performances were his first two wins. They were on soft to heavy and heavy. And people might think that he has to have that ground. I don't think so. That was said so. to me yesterday. No, I don't think so. Uh, his first time out... Uh, in a bumper, April 22. I'll just click on it here. A second to Pat Doreau, okay? Yeah. Beating a length and a half, maybe, let's see. Yeah, beating a length and a quarter. Pat Doreau is a very good horse. Not the best jumper in the world, uh, but a very, very good horse. Good engine. Excuse me. The time of the race was 4.05. 4.05 for a two-mile race in Punchdown in April, to me, is saying yielding ground. Or as you might say in Britain, good to soft. So I have no issue with him going on better ground, even though he's by Flemingsworth. Um Three uh, interesting runs then. And then in Limerick at Christmas, he was not at the forefront of the race early on, comes late, bolts up. And the last day, uh, wins a very ordinary race uh, on the 29th of January in Punch and beats Silver King. To me, never really put into it. JJ Slevin is doing a bit of shuffling before they turned in. And he's no choice but to come there and win. Uh, I think he's off 139 in the Carl Cup. Mm -hmm. Um, he's only had uh, five runs over four, 
four runs over fen- hurdles, rather, not fences, hurdles. So um, definitely a slight negative in terms of experience for the Carl Cup. Generally, the Carl Cup is won by horses or, or fought yeah, out by horses. That's the one thing I'm nervous about. Towards the top of the bet, sorry, towards the top of the weights, uh, if you've got 11 stone seven, etc., that's not an issue in the Carl Cup. Um, plenty of really good horses have won it. So that's a bit of a worry. He's definitely better than a 139 horse, I'd say. As we said, Fast or Slow was beaten in this race in the Carl Cup two years ago by a short head. And last year, an epic story was beaten ahead. So same owner, same trainer, um, Sean Mulrine and Martin Brazel. I think if he runs the Martin Pipe, somebody said to me that Martin Brazel's son can ride him in that. But you still get the impression by the betting that he might have more likely to appear uh, in the Carl Cup. And there's a horse in the Carl Cup just to keep an eye on. I don't know if you ever heard of him called Langer Dan. <laughs> Some mess in the Oh, it? tell us more. Like, th- there could be a movie. Ah, the dragons ridiculous. coming out that's of bags. That's ridiculous. It's, he said ulcers. Can you imagine? No, the- do you know what's great? Another way, somebody said it the other day. Do you know what's brilliant? There's <laughs> only saying that in February, he just loves the really, the, the, the spring weather. Like, the weather's been horrendous for the last month. He's only joking. But, um, yeah, Langer Dan's a bit of a... But seriously, can you imagine if, given the nonsense that if was Tony going Martin on... If Tony Martin was doing that, what would happen? Imagine if Gordon Elliott was doing it. Yeah. Imagine if Gordon Elliott took the Carl Cup winner and was having him anchored in the back of the field in a couple of Irish races, yeah. and then coming out after and going, oh, yeah, sorry about that. It's, um, and like, it's what, what is it this year, Ulcers, is it? What was ulcers. it last year? Like, I think it was Ulcers again last year. He, he was second to Gallop in the Champ in the Martin Pipe. Then the next year he get brought down the Martin Pipe, wins the Carl Cup, and now goes again. And I think he's only eight. Seems yeah. like he's 18. He's around that long. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't... That's uh, nonsense. Uh, if Langer Dan comes to the last... Uh, I won't be cheering for him. How does he even get back down to the mark of 141? I don't know. Tony Martin's getting scalded by the handicapper with theoretical and potential ideas because of who he's trained by. And yet Dan Skelton, oh yeah, back down to 141 there, I'll stock, not a bother. Yes. Are they that desperate for winners? I don't know. Um, went up to 147 after Cheltenham and then has come back down. Uh, and for his last two runs, he's been dropped six pounds. Do you know why Willie Mullins hasn't won a handicap chase at Cheltenham? I'll give you one good reason why he hasn't gone. Because they're all trying. Uh, here's another reason is, and I was only heard Ruby saying it the other day, is that he doesn't run novices in handicap chases. True. If he ran novices, whether they're trying or not, um, if they ran off, like there's horses there going into say, um, the Arkle over the years that are 40 to one shots. If they had ran in the Grand Annual off 140 odd, they might have won it, do you know what I mean? He'll do it for the Irish Grand National, but not for Cheltenham. No. He just likes great ones. Like my brother's horse, Rule Supreme, won the RSA 25 to one shot. He wasn't talking about running him and the Kim Muir or, do you know what I mean? Mm. And it paid off. So for the 90% time it doesn't pay off, it's worth Willie's while for the 10% that he does win the great ones, you know? Although he might do it this year with Meeting of the Waters. He could, and the ultimate he's got a right chance, yeah. Mm. Although Ireland has got a shocking record in that race. Um, can you give me a list of handicappers that you're very, very interested in for uh, children? Going back to the Ultima, uh, they haven't won it since 2006, 18 years, but I think they're not from 38. So it's only two horses per year that have gone for that. And generally, if you've got... That's a very important point to make. Yeah, it's only two a race. And I don't think there's been too many that have been less than 10 to 1 at the same time. So we could say, oh, it's it's back since Tony Martin's ah, Dundera, but there's been limited Irish participation. I like stats, but I mean, you have to keep them in, in perspective. Yeah. Uh, generally, if people in Ireland, if they have a three-mile handicap chaser, they go for the old, uh, sorry, they go for the um, the Kim Muir because they might get one of the, the good amateurs and they think it's an advantage, so. I don't think Irish trainers have ever really targeted the race, to be honest. No. Meeting of the Waters is a good chance. The performance to step up from an auto to one one six in Cork to winning the Paddy Power is, it's just, it's it's incredible. Um, it's pretty, leagues apart. Pretty, pretty good. It's, it's a huge jump up, you know, in terms of experience, in terms of uh, he'd run twice in Galway and then wins in Cork in a bad race. And he bolts up in the Paddy Power of 130. He's up to 145 now, 147 in the Ultima. Um, I'm not sure who's going to ride it. Maybe it's Patrick because he's involved in the horse. I think um, it is going to be Patrick. Okay. Um, so the Goffer is in there. Chianti Classico, Stumptown. Yeah, it's it's. What you have to keep in mind as well is that um, when you look at people are in the habit of looking at odds checker and stuff, and you're seeing eight to ten horses, and then when they arrive down to the start of one of the handicaps, you go, "Oh, there's twenty two in it." I thought there was only. <laughs> Odds checker on my screen was only showing like 10 or 12. And here's 22 of them at the start. You know what I mean? You need a lot Wait of luck. Wait a second, this field is bigger than I thought. What? 
what's this about? Um, you just need to keep it in perspective that it's a handicap and it's hard. But I've been drawn into handicaps in the last week or two because I'm looking for a bit of value. And there's so many short price favourites in, in the graded races that you're kind of, when you see a horse that's six to one, you go, does that mean I get six times my money for what I bet? Do you know what I mean? You kind of, yeah. you forget that you can get good prices. Um, the Boodles is mad open. Oh, that's uh, insane race. It's insane race. Lark in the morning, obviously, big guy catcher. Batman Jirak, uh, I tipped him up on the website a while ago. So uh, that's where that move came from. Uh, I don't know. but um, he became no, He became the wise guy horse of Twitter, and now I know why. Um, he two runs in France. He went off very heavily punted for the graded race at Ferry House in early December, going mm. right-handed. He couldn't handle it at all. He couldn't even come around the last bend. So you'd almost at, think the saddle had slipped. It was so bad. It was horrendous. Yeah, it looked like a right monkey. But at the same time, uh, the next day at Christmas in Leopardstown, he jumps the second last in last place for Mikey O'Sullivan. He doesn't move too too many muscles. He finishes fourth. He's not beaten that far. Uh, he's off 133. So he has a chance, but uh, I wouldn't go too mad now. Like, there's a horse um, belonging to uh, Martin Brazel, Jose Partier, who's only four lengths behind him. And I think he gets seven pounds for that four lengths. So just, there's different angles that you can look at for this race from 10 different directions. Um, Eagle Fang won the race in Nace that has given you four of the last five winners yep. of this race. And uh, Nara didn't look overly busy back in fourth for JP and his third, on her third start. Whatever what, could you mean? Would do uh, would have a chance if the ground come up really soft. Melantino is very interesting. Had a rating in France of one three six, two runs in the UK, and uh, now off one twenty six. Get that mark? Ah, I think the one two six is fine. I mean, just the French mark was inflated. He he had a very good run in a graded race in Altai, but I think the one two six is about right. Like, I mean, it can't be that mad. Like, he can still get seven and eight to one. So. He's not like he's two to one all of a sudden. Yeah, um, that is if, a race though that people get very carried away with certain horses. Like it was a Ben Pauling horse was backed into favourites, or at least was massively gambled on for Rachel oh, Blackmore last year. Massive gamble, yeah. Bad, bad. He was bad, and he was woeful. Uh, and then there was another year. There was a horse called Gaelic Warrior in it. <laughs> a fun two. You know, Katie works with Brazil every day, and I, I think every final front podcast listener should know we still don't understand how he did it. And also, by the way, coming up to go, by, go past the stands with a circuit to go, Brazil was nearly knocked down. Yeah. And uh, anyway. He could be interesting in the Coral Cup, actually. He could, he could, he could, he could. Uh, Malantino, if he runs badly, um, Sergino's price will obviously drift because it's there's not too many links between the four-year-old form between Ireland mm. and England. I think the English four-year-olds are not good. Uh, Burdett Road is no star. And Brad Anfassa, who's bits of form, linked in with them. He won a, a maiden hurdle in Ballon Robe in the summer. So I just, I'd have my doubts on that. Form, I'm glad you said that because that's, there is a, a narrative that the Irish juveniles aren't much good and the British ones are better. I think it's more like what you've just said. Yeah. It's that Sergino is the best of a bad lot. And if Sergino had gone to Willie as part of that, they've all come from the same place. They've all come from France. If Salvatore Mundi had gone to Nicky and mm -hmm. in an alternate reality, would Sergino have won that Irish race that uh, spring juvenile by 10 links? I don't think he would have. I don't think there's a whole lot between those horses at all. I don't think there's a whole lot between them. Uh, Sergino was visually brilliant the last day, uh, but the fact that he's trained by Nicky, like if you're backing him in a championship race uh, at even money, you're braver than me. Yeah. Uh, Nicky would want to have two or three winners at Cheltenham before he goes off evens. I think he'll go off bigger. I think as the results start to happen at Cheltenham and over the weekend, I think you're going to start to see Nicky's horse drifting a little bit. Pop quiz, hot shot. How many winners did Nicky Henderson have at Cheltenham last year? You asked me this earlier, so I know the answer. So I have to be honest and say one Constitution Hill. But you know what I mean? I couldn't just say the answer and sound smart. So I had to say, but it was a good question. My answer was somewhere between naught and one, but it was one. Yeah, my, no, no, you my were, original answer. You were, you were spot on, to be fair. Um, um, who else is on Gavin Lynch's shortlist that Final Furlan podcast listeners and viewers should know see, about? Uh, the Grand Annual, maybe something like, like Sanwa was a, a massive eye catcher two runs ago in the Dan Moore. Go look at that if you want to see what a horse, if an eye-catching performance, what it is, that's it. Massive performance, jump brilliant. And then the next day goes in the grade one, going left-handed and jump shocking. So what price he'll go off? I don't know. He's two pounds higher. He's off 152 in England, 150 in Ireland. And Madara has a chance. Very impressive. Two starts go at Cheltenham. Uh, wins, thankfully, at the DRF. Uh, is now up to 143. Jumps really well. Pat DeRoe, who was second, needs to jump a lot better. Uh, Safarur, Looks like a horse that's been targeted at this race. Mm. I don't think Safarur 
They didn't throw the kitchen sink at him behind Quilix, yes. I'd say they were as happy to finish second as win that day. Um, Liberty Hunter has bits of form. Which would make you question Quilixias' form to a certain extent. Maybe a little bit. I think, yeah, I just... Safaro for me was the eye catcher in the one in Ace and I thought to myself, oh yeah, that, that looks like a, a grand annual horse. Um, the Pertemps final, I think it's the worst Pertemps we've ever seen. Um, I tipped up Gabby's Cross a couple of weeks ago, 20s, it's 10s or 12s now, it's fine. It just has an each way chance. Um, was a 143 rated chaser. It was only beating like four lengths in the Paddy Power off that. Uh, I think it even ran in the entry national last year, but it had two runs back over hurdles uh, and had an impossible task uh, on both days um, against horses who are now way, way higher. That was a Galway and also a Punchestown. Um, so I think Gabby's Cross has a chance. Got six pounds from the, the English handicapper, which is a little bit sneaky, but 133. Three, it only carries uh, the top weight of Gardens is going to stay in. So I think it's only got like 10 stone seven. So I could see that run uh, an each way race. Uh, in the plate, very Basically hard. Basically looking for something that just snuck fourth the last day, aren't you? Ah, yeah, I suppose. But I mean, that can be a bit overplayed, I think. You're looking for a relatively unexposed horse that'll definitely stay the trip. Like if they finish first, second, third or four, I know the stats are that you can't win a qualifier and win the final, but... It's it's got harder now that they have it down to four places, hasn't it? There's less sneaky ones sneaking in. Like there's no Chantry House just about manages to get up for fourth. Yeah, yeah, he was a bit sneaky, all right, but um, he's ten, isn't he? He'd have a chance. Uh, I think a lots of a chance in the pretemps. Um, Lamelas is one of the big prizes that I'd be intrigued with there. Really? Speaking of Mr. Skelton, anyway, continue. Yeah. I think that's a nightmare of a race, to be honest. Yeah, another former chaser. Um, in the plate. Maybe Cribilly, but like you have to remember there's 20 odd in all these races. Um, let's he's, go. Kinda, he's very well found now, too, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's off 140. He's very well in. He wasn't uh, overly abused in Exeter the last day to get up. No. I think the jockey only got vigorous in the last 200 yards. Before that, you're kind of going, oh. Um, the county heard loads in with chances. Uh, absurd and, and King of Kingsfield. Are there for the novices, King of Kingsfield and Absurd both would want good ground, in my opinion, uh, and would have a chance if that happened. Lode Sod ran very well the last day against the Iberico Lord in the Betfair hurdle. Uh, Pied Piper's only chin in the race last year when it was very surprising to see Davy get beat in that finish. Um, I missed out the. Let me just go back to the Kim Muir. Yeah, I think there's one. I think there's one you might be well, very interested in here. The two horses I've had the most on. In the last week or two, um, not at the price that they are now, but a little, small, bit bigger. Like I did back Percival Galwa of one three Irish rating one three seven, but he got seven pounds. Gavin Cromwell has come out today and said that he's not going. Um, that's fine, but I just could not believe that. I know the way you're thinking. Only got two pounds uh, from the British handicapper. One forty three here. Lovely run first time out uh, behind Imagine a Fairy House. Very nice run behind Gaelic Warrior. The last day, third, sorry, the, his third run over fences was third to Gaelic Warrior and Ile to Tomp and Limerick. That was an absolutely brilliant run. Uh, then has runs in a handicap chase in the DRF. Anyway, 143, only up to 145. I didn't think he'd um, only get two pounds. He did. All his family are three milers. Um, they've all won over staying trips, so there's no issue there. And uh, what do you call the third favourite in the... Um, in the Mayor's Chase, she's a half sister. Uh, Limerick Lace. Yeah, she's a half sister to him. So. Mm. But there's others in the family that have all won over three miles. So staying, I don't think it'd be a major issue. Uh, Derek O'Connor, hopefully, to ride. Uh, he's got a massive chance. Could be a big week for him. It could. Uh, how long more he's going to ride, I don't know. So This could be it. This could be it. What a way to bow out. I hope Corbett's Cross, another way you're thinking. Peace out. I hope he doesn't win on Corbett's Cross and say, that's me done. No, oh, JP wouldn't let him. No, good. Uh, good time Johnny got the £10 That's too much Angel's Dawn is £11 higher than last year Whacker Clan is a horse I, I've had something on um, Up to 131 Won a handicap chase in Cheltenham in October of 125 Reappeared there 10 days ago In a handicap hurdle over 2 miles And had a lovely lovely run around Nace Finished maybe 6th And of 131 If it gets in lightweight Out in front wing and fences I'm not saying it's a certainty but you'll Get a lovely run for your money at 12 and 14 to one each way. I'll just give a shout out to his syndicate because I was on TalkSport 2 the day he won at Cheltenham. They're mad. 
and they, they were having some crack. And I mentioned it to Henry last week on the final furlong. And he said, "They're all if if we get in, they're all going to be there, and Cheltenham better watch out." So best of luck to the Wacker Clan syndicate. I, I think he'd have a chance, but if I'd pick out two horses to win at Cheltenham. Uh, financially, it'd be another way you're thinking, and the other one is in the Martin Pipe. Um, now, just to clarify, yeah. just you're saying this is one of the horses you've backed the most in the last week for Cheltenham. Yeah, I know the way you're thinking. Yeah, and I know the way you're thinking, and the other one is um, in the Martin Pipe. Now, the price on I know the way you're thinking is only down to like four to one best now, which is a little bit short. Uh, Key de Bourbon is the other one in the Martin Pipe. Let's go. Uh, I Don Poli 2.0, Sir de Champ 2.0. We'll see. I I, I mentioned Sam Majest and Key de Bourbon on the website. In the last month, I tipped up Sam Majest originally because you didn't know what rating it was going to get. It could get anything from 130 to 160, right? Having bet Noble Yates in Limerick. Okay. The other thing you had to note the horse in third is only rated 107 and is, has ran since and ran terribly. So it was an impossible horse to give a rating to. So the Irish handicapper gave her 140, and I just said, look, it's worth back a non runner, no bet in case it gets in, but it probably won't get into the Martin Pipe. It might get 146, 147. And I thought the same about I know the way you're thinking would have to go for, say, the ultimate, you know. Uh, but he got 145 and Sam and Jess was left on 140. I couldn't believe it. Like that just, was magic. Yeah. And then uh, more recently, what was very interesting is if you ever see a Willie Mullins horse getting an English handicap mark in January or February, it happens very, very, very rarely. It happened with uh, Gaelic Warrior going to nine. They knew that in January, February time. And somebody in close Hutton convinced Willie to run the horse in the boodles and it nearly paid off. Um, Willie Mullins this season has had two horses that I know of only two that I can think of maybe there's more but only two I can think of that got a rating in England in January and February one was Batman Jurak 133 so that's why I tipped it up one of the reasons I did as well as the run of Christmas it got a UK rating so I'm thinking to myself right they're thinking of the boodles and the other one they got they went fishing for was Key de Bourbon and it got a rating of 140 in the UK same as Sam Majest so had two runs in France uh, wins a maiden hurdle and ace over 2-3 staying on and staying on and staying on looked like in a spot of bother come to the last but stayed very well and then the last day in Clonmel over 2 miles it beats uh, Westport Cove totally wrong trip this horse will never you will never ever see Key de Bourbon run over 2 miles again ever because he's not a 2 miler um, beats Westport Cove who finished 4th to Tully Hill the last day like you know a decent horse um, so I'm just hopeful that the step back up to two and a half miles for Key de Bourbon would make a massive difference. Price is not great, like it's four to one in a massive handicap. Waterford Whispers has a chance, no ordinary Joe has a chance. There's three of JPs we've mentioned already. Sam Majest, Waterford Whispers, no ordinary Joe. Doddy the Great, good run in the Betfair hurdle. Lucky place loomed up to Gidley Park the last day on the near side. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, Nurse Susan, I don't think, is making Cheltenham. Uh, Answer to Cave has a chance, lump sum if he goes. There's just, there's lots and lots that have a, would have chances, but I just, um, one of the horse dimensions in Canto Bruno, whenever this horse runs again on good, good ground, and I mean good ground, or very close to good ground, there's more to come from him. He was very impressive in Cheltenham in October, November time on quick ground. He's had two runs since on bad ground. And I think when he runs on good ground, I think he's a proper horse. He was moved from John McConnell to Gavin Cromwell, yeah. and then Gavin ran him on bad ground twice. When no, John... well, he, he I think he won first time for Gavin. No, he, yeah, he did. Oh, sorry. Gavin then ran him twice on bad ground with John McConnell oh, yeah, yeah. having been on the show saying good ground is crucial to him. Yeah, so I think we know what they're doing there. Yeah, and I think he's somewhere around one forty ish. I'm not sure off the top of my head, mm. but um, I'm just saying that the handicaps are very very tough. But this year, you know. I've got drawn in a little bit simply because you're getting six, eight, ten to one on horses that you might think go off shorter and you get fed up back in horses at six to four and two to one, you know? Yeah, well, the the novice chases and some even some of the novice hurdles, first of all, you don't know who's going where and the novice chases are all going to be small field races. So the handicaps are the one races that you can actually get stuck into. Yeah, but handicaps are tricky, you know? Yeah. If, you, if you back it, there's nine handicaps. If you back the winner of two of them, give yourself a, a pat on the back because you've done really well. Well, hopefully, we will have the winner of two of them on the final front the podcast. Hopefully, Gavin Lynch has got boatloads of winners for us. Uh, Gravy galore. I just keep it. Don't go too mad the first day or two. The one thing I'll say to you is that punters have a better chance Tuesday and Wednesday traditionally. Thursday can be very tricky. Friday can be a mixed bag. Some years it can be decent. Other years can be very tough. So, look, it's a long week and um, we have to... Um, 
just make sure we enjoy it first of all. We have 28 races to get through. It's a marathon, not a sprint. What is the one piece, piece of advice that you would give? Uh, definitely, definitely. As always, keep your profit and loss. I keep a spreadsheet of all my bets. It's a pain in the arse to, to write to type them in, but you have to do it. And you've got a column then for the stake. Who was the bet done through? Uh, profit and loss column. Uh, each night, if I'm not away with the lads and we're not gone golfing or somewhere to watch Cheltenham in Tenerife or somewhere, I'm at home this year. I have to do a few videos and all that. So uh, each night I'll be doing my p and and I wouldn't be able to go to sleep without knowing it. And um, it's just, it's good practice. And if you've got multiples rolling onto a horse, don't be afraid to take some of your stake back. Uh, I was telling you a story earlier on that some years ago uh, I did a, a multiple going into Leopard Sound at Christmas with maybe four or five horses. And the last leg was um, Faheen, who was, I think, 2 to 11 or 1 to 5 or something. And uh, my friend saw me on Betfair and he says, what are you doing? I says, well, I'm laying Faheen for my stake. You know, I was laying a monkey at, at 1 to 5 to lose 100 quid to cover the stake on the on the multiple. And um, he said, what are you doing that for? Sure, he's a certainty. I said, I know he is, but it just, I don't see any harm in doing it for the sake of losing a few quid on the single. It'll, it'll cover the stake on the multiple, do you know what I mean? And he, he, he pulled up, he more or less fell and pulled up. So there's no such thing as a certainty. And if you have a multiple going on to some horse and you know a friend of yours that has bet fair, no harm to take back your stake, I don't think. Good advice. Sage advice from Gavin Lynch. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Final Forum Podcast. I've absolutely loved it. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, uh, Very much appreciate your generosity as well. And your insight has been absolute gold. If you liked this, where can people find out more about Gavin Lynch and what are you going to be doing for Cheltenham? Uh, I've to, I'm doing videos for members each day uh, the day before and I'm also doing a preview for irishracing.com as well So, um, and then the videos only go to the end of March and she will see we might be doing it again next winter we'll see I'm not sure yet Oh you haven't decided? No but she will see there's no panic to make decisions like that Next your time I have a feeling there'll be quite a bit of demand for it though I shall see and best of luck to you and your bets are you going to keep a P&L? Yes I yeah Thomas. yeah thank you I, I will for Cheltenham, I will. Yeah, and then once I'm able to look back on it and go, oh, actually, that makes sense. And actually, what's interesting as well, if you keep a P&L on it, I always look back a week later to see which races I did stupid things in and I yeah. did clever things in. And, and they'll be, like everybody else, I'll have a mixture of stupid and clever. So it's no harm to look back afterwards and kind of make a few notes. Yeah, it's all very well and good to be crunching the numbers and going with the horse that you think is most likely to win. But... If you're having this, if you're struggling with Cheltenham and you've heard a few things about a horse that's going, mm. and suddenly that horse looks like a bigger price than it should be, or it looks like it's a good thing at two to one, you think, ah, oh, I can get that hundred quid. I got a little. That's a dangerous road to go down. Don't do that. And if you're doing P and L, that'll force you to look at that stuff afterwards and really think. Yeah, sure. Look, the only person really you have to answer to is yourself. So yeah. just try and do it as best you can, and don't be afraid to stick the horses in at three to one and seven to two into each way multiples. I think it's definitely worth doing anyway. Especially if they happen to be lossy mouth for the champion hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> There's GavinLynchRacing.com. Uh, make sure you check it out. There is some fantastic gold there and we really appreciate Gavin's time Thank you, on the Final Forum Podcast. If you've liked this, hit the subscribe button to the Final Forum Podcast. Did you know that over 90% of the people who are watching this have not hit the subscribe button yet? Go away. This is part of the algorithm on what YouTube. What does the subscribe, subscribe button do? It means you get content from us straight away for free so you get notifications to say you get notifications you'll never miss thing. another video all that stuff is there but and what does the like do the like helps with like helps the algorithm massively it pushes so, the show out to even okay. more people so like and subscribe like and subscribe but that's one of the pieces of information that came up yesterday when we were going through the youtube videos over 90 percent of the people who are watching this have not hit subscribe and what's the name I, of that movie you want to see dune dune 2 don't bother with dune Maybe the week after. Not Cheltenham. until after Sheldon. When it's doom and gloom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening on the podcast apps. Uh, much appreciated. We will talk to you again very, very soon on the Final Furlong Podcast with more Cheltenham content coming your way from all of us, Gavin Lynch and myself, Emma Kennedy. Look after yourself and each other. God bless.